Hi, I am Aliza Tanvir from Skillcurve. In this video, you will learn how to work with Zeppelin Notebook in a cluster to execute PySpark. And for that, we will first open the Zeppelin Notebook. Then we are going to set the interpreter directive to PySpark. Then we are going to execute a job which is actually some PySpark command. And then finally, we are going to monitor the metrics. In the last video, we left off at creating the cluster having one master node and three worker nodes. So now we are going to move forward. Firstly, we will go to web interfaces tab and from there you have to find the Zeppelin notebook. Once you select the Zeppelin notebook, you will land on a page looking like this and then you have to create a notebook inside the Zeppelin and for that you have to click create new node. Here you have to provide name for the notebook. I am going to call it my notebook and then you have to select the default interpreter. By default it is Spark. You can select any one that you want. Okay. And then click create. Once you click create, a notebook will be created. A notebook is not like a shell which immediately establishes a connection with the drivers and the executors. Instead, it is just a web UI which is not yet connected to the cluster. And you must run some special commands to initiate the connection and it could be as simple as running the Spark version. So if I try to run a Spark query here to find the Spark version and once I execute it, you will see that it has returned us the result 3.1.3. However, the spark.version command is executed as a scalar code. This is because the default Zeppelin notebook cell is a scalar cell, but we want to use PySpark and to do so, we need to add a line in the beginning of the cell. And to do so, we need to add this line in the beginning of the cell. This is an interpreter directive for the cell to ensure that the cell is considered as a PySpark cell. Now after this, you can run Python or any PySpark code that you want. I am going to simply run a command and you will see that now it is going to execute it as a PySpark code instead of a scalar code. This code that we just executed is called a job and now you can go to the Spark history server to view the history. And to do so, you have to go back here and then you have to select the Spark history server. Once you land on the page, you will see that it has not shown us anything because the history server is not going to show us the currently running application. So what else can be done? Go back and from here you have to select the yarn resource manager and it will show you the Zeppelin application. Once you land on the page, you can see that we have a Zeppelin application running. And once you scroll a bit to the right, you will see the application master tracking URL. Once you click on it, it should take you to the Spark context UI. So here we have the job timeline for it. And you can see that we have got a one driver and two executors. However, you can see that the executor 2 is already released by the yarn dynamic resource allocation policy and that is why the executor 2 has been removed. So this is how you can use the Zeppelin notebook inside the cluster to execute PySpark. That is all for this video. Thank you.